Hey, welcome back, West Coast Survival League Tactical. I uh, want to say hello, uh, good afternoon uh, to all you guys out there, and thank you for joining the channel. And today we are going to be taking a look at the Condor Tool and Knife here on Knife. Uh, just received this a couple weeks ago. I've been using it, uh, you know, for the past uh, few weeks, and uh, you know, I'm really, really starting to dig this knife. So uh, if you can stay with us, we're going to go over a couple things with this knife, and uh, thank you for joining us. Okay guys, let's go over some specs. So first off, this is 1095 hard carbon steel. Now this came out of Joe Flowers' mouth. I mean, I'm so used to 1075, first off, because you know Joe Flowers designed this knife. He pretty much designs everything for, for a Condor Tooler knife. Honestly, he really does. Dude's a stud. And he does the top stuff and dude's a stud. So, you know, I'm anytime Joe Flowers figures something out, I'm I'm gravitating towards it because the dude's he's a genius when it comes down to blades. Don't know you, buddy, but you're the man. So let's get back to it. I'm so used to 1075 with uh, with um, Condor Tool and Knife. It's there. It came out of his mouth. They're going to start moving to 1095, and you know, just like the rest. I'm so used to 1095. It's a it's a steel I'm used to. It's uh, mostly every blade that I have out there, uh, except for that real my my high budget steel, my my 3V, you know, my S30V kind of steel. Um, this stuff right here, my 154CM, which you all know I love my Lobos. <laughs> Anyways, um, they're they're just they're doing a great job of moving in towards 1095. Like I said, you're gonna start seeing a lot of Condor Tool and Knife on this channel. Um, let's go with the blade length, the 4.25 inches. You got an overall length of 8.625. You got the walnut handles, and let's talk a little bit about about this uh, the design on this. What I love is the back end. I, I'm so familiar with that. With that, that's on my one of my favorite blades, the Grizzly from um, the Grizzly from uh, uh, Bark River. So that that one right there, I, I just love. Anytime that you have a flare that comes out, uh, it just helps you with the control of the blade itself. That's what I love about it. Um, one thing that you're gonna see right here, I've, I've heard a lot of complaints about. It. I don't understand it, but they talk about this, this, uh, the, the, the wire wrap that they have is that brass wire wrap. First off, you ain't gonna worry about it rusting. It's brass. Y'all know brass doesn't rust. Okay, that's why you got the brass pins in there. Pretty much, that's what this was made for, right? So you can, it'll take the environment out there. That's what he's a great designer for. He knows what he's doing, but. You know, everyone's like, you're going to get hot spots. It's going to hurt. No, it doesn't. I've been carrying this thing for three weeks. Let me tell you what. It does not hurt my hand. Actually, what I use it for in my different positions with this knife of holding it, I use it for control. And it works. It does not hurt. I can actually go use this blade without gloves, which is a really good change up. You know, I love the control that I get with gloves. But if I have something like that on a blade... Boom, I'm in there like swimwear. So they did a great job of that. It's a full tang knife. You can see it constructed right here. 1095 is a great banger steel. You know what to do with it. You can sharpen it in the field. It's the easiest thing in the world. This knife itself is easy to sharpen, literally with a leather strop. And even if you have a ceramic rod, you're in, you're in the house. This thing will actually do its business. Now, I did it, like I said, the one thing that, I guess I was a little spoiled from the Bushcrafter itself, but this knife, the you know, the, the give a take on it is not as slicey as I wish it would have been. Um, but I have touched it up, and like I said, very easy to touch it up. Um, I just think they did a, a magnificent job on this. It's a great blade. Okay, let's go over the sheath, guys. So you guys know, whenever you bought a, a Condor tool and knife, you would get that basic sheath. Now, I had no complaints with the sheath. I loved it. It was great, genuine leather. But you know, you had to form it, right? I, I did that with my bush lore. I, I wet formed it, right? I had to because it was just, it just goes in there and if you didn't do it right, it would come out if you turned it upside down. I can have a problem with these ones. So you got the logo up in the front, look at the stitching. They're putting extra little riveting up here in the front. Um, there's the back of it. I mean, they just, look at that. I love what they're doing. They stamped it in the back. The stitching's really good. This is a perfect sheath. If you don't like leather sheaths and you want Kydex because of the way it forms, you will want this, trust me. And it just seems for the amount of money that you're spending, look at that. Look at how it just locks in there. I mean, it ain't coming out. It ain't coming out. You ain't getting that thing out because it's formed. It formed to this knife perfectly. So, I mean, on a, on a scale of 1 to 10, you got an 11 on this sheath. I'm, I'm not lying. The best sheet that Condor Tool and Knife has come out with by far. 
Okay, so with the Huron knife, uh, one thing that I uh, have enjoyed about it is the way it actually fits inside of your hand. Uh, you know, it's a really good, easy knife to carry, uh, no jimping. Uh, one thing I have always like is in that back end, to have it to have a little bit of a curvature to the back because when you're holding it, I'll take the gloves off, when you're, when you're actually holding on to it, if it just, it, it, your hand eats it up really well. And uh, that's always a good thing. You always want that, you always want the blade to feel like, uh, like, like it's, it's part of you. Uh, with your hand, so I, I don't have any complaints there. Um, you know, you have a you have a pretty good uh, 90 degree spine back there. I mean, I'm not really one that's going to be sh striking a ton of ferro rods on my uh, back of my knives, but this one will serve its purpose. Um, one thing I was I was a little disappointed with, honestly, uh, with this knife, which I, I'm not going to give it a top grade. I'll give it four. You know, I'll, I'll give it some 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 good backing behind it, but the blade just wasn't. Uh, as bitey as I thought it should be, uh, even given the grind, it's it's a convex it's a it's a convex grind uh, to a flat. Um, and what I what, what you you would think about that because you you know I noticed that we get a lot of that with bark rivers uh, in you know ten this is a ten ninety five steel so a completely different steel. So I thought it was going to act a lot different, uh, but you'll see. But it still serves its purpose. I mean, this isn't going to be if you had to. I'm just telling you you could uh, if you needed to. As far as uh, you know, batani, it's gonna it, it will do its job of getting down into the wood, and you know, here we go with some feather stickers just so you can kind of see. So you have pretty decent control with the blade uh, coming down. Uh, one one thing I do love about the blade is that curve, right? Uh, and that curve is really good for being slicing. And uh, here you go. So let's take a look at this. Get out of the way for you guys to see. All right. Well, for feather sticking. And it, and it, I'm not saying that this is a bad blade. Don't don't get me wrong. When I talked about, I just thought. I guess I'm so spoiled with uh, with the uh, with the Scandi grinds that that Condor comes out with that they're so slicey. I mean, I am so in love right now with the Bushcraft, the basic Bushcraft for Con from Condor. It is so slicey. I mean, it is really slicey. This one, not as slicey, but gets the job done, and it looks really nice. This is such a beautiful blade. You almost really don't even want to use this the way that it's done. Um, you know, it's just, but but all in all, just great for, uh, for what you need to get done with it. Uh, and it does work well. I mean, you obviously, you've got, you've got a, um, the steel that we're using with this one. I got to double check with that one. I, I, I think I said this was, uh, oh yeah, no, it is 1095. You know, I'm getting it mixed up with 1075 because Condor's notorious for using uh, 1075 on most of their blades. So I uh, do apologize for that, but yeah, this is, uh, this is 1095 and they're new to it, but they're doing a great job. But this can handle its uh, task, the hand, as far as what you need your blade to do. here there you go it will work there you go um, and that's the Huron okay guys in closing um, let me talk to you a little bit about my thoughts on this blade um, do I recommend this blade of course I do you know I'm gonna give it you know hey if you want to go get it boom Go get it. You can find them anywhere. Amazon, you know, DLT. Find them anywhere they sell Condor Tool and Knife. Pretty easy to get. Cheapest I found it is going to be on Condor Tool and Knife. When I bought this one, it was 52 bucks. I seen them as high as 65. So you have a little bit of play there. You got to do the searching to find it um, to make sure that you find the one that's going to be cheapest for you if you're going to go get it. Now, let me uh, tell you what I rate it. I give it about a four or five stars though. Um, I, you know, the only complaint that I have, I love the fit and finish. I love the fact, uh, the way that they stain the blade. Um, that was one thing I wanted to talk about. The stain on this is not coming off. Uh, you know, you get a lot of different stains, uh, different, you know, when, especially on 1095, you're going to get a coating on there. Uh, this stain, it's, uh, I think it's an acid wash. Uh, when we talked about it, I think we did not. Well, anyways, it's an acid wash. Um, the acid wash for this particular knife it works really well. Um, I love so many things about this blade, but I was, I was a little bit, 
I was disappointed when I when I when I uh, tested out the sliciness of this blade. I thought it was going to be a great slicey monster, and it fell a little short. I was a little spoiled maybe with the with the basic bushcraft that they come up with with the bush lore. Um, those knives, I mean, even the Nesmic that they have is super super duper slicey. But once again, those are scanty grinds, right? And this is not this is not a scanty grind. Um, to me, this is this is I mean, it has the properties of a uh, of a saber but it isn't it's like a convex it's like a flat convex literally it is if you look at the blade it's kind of funny how it works i really don't know the exact grind on this to be honest with you it kind of kind of fits a couple a uh, couple genres but uh for what it's worth to me it wasn't the sliciest blade that you had out there um, so because of that, it's going to get four or five stars. I would recommend, uh, honestly, if you're going to get a Condor Tula knife, I will definitely push the Bushcraft. I will definitely push the Bush lore ahead of that um, as far as the best blades that they make, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, but once again, those are Scandi grinds, right? So you will know how Scandi grinds act and what they're made for. Sometimes you need something like this. So if a need is, a, is, is met by having this kind of uh, a grind for you, then I'm all for it because it fits great. It's a small handled knife. It's not overly powerful. It fits. It works well. The ergonomics are great. Uh, fit and finish on there are great. So it's a good blade for you guys out there uh, that are looking for something in that mid 50s range as far as a, a nice looking blade that you can have. Uh, they did knock it out the, the ballpark as far as the sheathing system and it is a great, great EDC knife in my opinion because it's so nice and tight and compact. So I give this blade uh, four or five stars. Um, thank you so much for uh, joining us today, taking a look at this knife. Um, once again, too, I want to say thank you guys. You know, I've, I took a little bit of a hi hiatus. I had a couple things I had to do. I haven't been uh, I haven't been putting out videos in the past three weeks. I went on vacation, had to take care of some family members, but family uh, matters. Uh, but right now we're back on it. I'm going to be bringing you guys out two two videos a week. We're going to get back online. We're going to see a lot more Condor Tool and Knife. Um, I have some other different blades that are going to be coming through. Uh, we're getting our hands on the um, we're getting our hands on the Bark River. Um, Jeez, what was that? The Taupe, the Taupe Recon. Uh, I'll be putting a video out on that uh, shortly. And uh, definitely, I'm also doing the GNS. We'll get the GNS out from uh, LT Wright. So we got a couple blades that are going to be coming up down the pipeline. And for, we want you guys to make sure you, uh, you stay tuned. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you like it, share it. Uh, we'll be out on social media, the standards uh, on the social media. If you guys uh, have any comments, feel free. Let's get the comments rolling. Thank you so much for joining us uh, over here at West Coast Survival and Tactical. And from everyone over here at West Coast Survival and Tactical, make sure you stay ready so you don't have to get ready. I mean it. And we'll see you out there. Take care.